Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to The Worldview. I'm your host, Chris Greco. For the next 30 minutes, we'll be talking about areas of the world where you may have heard from the news, but you may not know exactly what some of the details are, maybe geography, aspects, history, things like that. So what we're going to talk about today is going to be two areas, and I, and I wanted to make sure that we cover each one. So hopefully we'll be able to do that in the brief time that we have together. The first one is going to be the Gaza Strip. You have probably heard a lot of things about the Gaza Strip. Gaza Strip this, Gaza this, Gaza this, uh, you know, strip this, you know, Gaza Strip that. But where is this? Where is the Gaza Strip? And what type of history does it have? And why is it this hotbed of contention between the Palestinians and the Israelis? What, why is that what it is? Now, I am not a member of Israel. I can't tell you or I'm not a Palestinian. I don't know what they're thinking, they're feeling, that type of thing. All I can do is present some history, and hopefully you'll be able to take that history and move on with it, work with it, and be able to do some things with it, and maybe do some more research than what I've un than what I've uncovered. And uh, Encyclopedia Britannica is fantastic. It's uh, it's got a um, Britannica has this. The website is a really good website. It's got a lot of different uh, different history on different areas. So all these things we're going to talk about. And the second one, the second area we're going to talk about is tanks to Ukraine. So uh, what I wanted to do is I, I know that this is really a kind of a controversial area. Uh, a lot of people are giving up tanks. Uh, the Leopard tanks are coming from Germany. Poland's given Leopard tanks, Leopard 2. Uh, we're given Abrams tanks, uh, 31 of them. Uh, the British are, are, are given some tanks. So there's there's a lot of heavy armor going into Ukraine right now to battle the Russians. So my thing is this, is as an intelligence officer, my job was to take a look at these types of things and say, okay, you know, it sounds really good. I mean, the Abrams is a fantastic tank. It's our front line, you know, top of the top of the line, no kidding type of tank. It does all kind of neat things. It travels at, you know, umpty miles an hour. It's, uh, it can fire while moving. It's, it's got all kind of different capabilities there that just makes it a really, you know, top runner from the standpoint of tanks. But the one thing that nobody has, has talked about, the, the one thing that nobody has addressed is the one thing that we're going to address here on the show. And I show it to you. I'm going to show you the maps and show you the different areas, and, and so you can understand a little bit about the geography, about the the ideas of, of where this where they're going into, where they're coming out of, all those types of things. So I think that's very very important because everybody needs to sit back and realize, okay, we're giving tanks to Ukraine. Yeah, you know, it's a fait accompli. It's a done deal. Uh, will this help them, or will it in fact hurt them in the long run? Will it will it hurt them? You know, from the standpoint of with all these capabilities, it, it's got one, every single weapon that you can ever think of has one Achilles heel, has one weakness, which if you exploit, you can defeat that weapon. Every single weapon, every one of them has an Achilles heel. And if you can exploit that Achilles heel, if you can exploit that weakness, you can beat that weapon. I mean... You, I mean, you can see it right now, even drones, drones. It's funny because everyone talks about drones as if they're this incredibly, you know, you can't beat them. You can drones are all about wireless communications. You defeat that wireless canal between the drone and the control station. And guess what? That drone's not going to go anywhere. Drones is going to, it's going to literally fall out of the sky. So there are there are weapons to do that with. Um, now the drones that the the Russians are using, I don't think that they deter. I don't think that they have anything to do with wireless communications. I think they set them with GPS and they let them rip. But we'll talk about that as we get into the Ukraine aspect. But the first thing I want to talk about is the Gaza Strip. So the first thing I want to do is show you where the Gaza Strip is because I think this is important. So this is the Gaza Strip. This little area right here. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to bring this up. This is the Gaza Strip, folks. Everyone thinks the Gaza Strip is like here somewhere. No, the Gaza Strip is right here. It's a very, very, very small area. And we'll go into exactly the size of that in a second. And this is the Gaza Strip here. 
Um, it's, you know, and it's, it's interesting how, it, of course, it's Gaza here, but these are the different, these are the different towns in this area. And this is Google Earth Pro, by the way, fantastic uh, applications, free. You can download it. You can do exactly what I do. Uh, let's see what the, uh, let's see what the, the line of measurement is here. So um, we're going to just take a look at this and see what this is. So we're talking about, um, about 25 miles here, 25 miles. And we'll clear that. And then we're talking about the lar the the widest area, and we'll talk about that in a second, is about seven miles. So this area is probably about five, uh, less than five, three, almost four miles. So I mean, we're talking about 25 miles, and people might sit there and say, "Well, Chris, you know, what are we talking about here? Let's let's make sure that we understand where we're talking about. So we're just going to go to an area where we're very familiar with, and that's going to be the United States." We're going to measure this thing off. So here we have, here we have the United States, and we're going to figure out, you know, what we're talking about here. So we're just going to go right to the United States, and we'll go to um, Pennsylvania, and we'll just go to Pittsburgh, and we'll say, okay, um, what are we talking about? Twenty-five miles here. So let's say Pittsburgh to Youngs, Youngstown, right? Pittsburgh to Youngstown is fifty-four miles. Pittsburgh to this area right here is about five miles. And we're saying 25 miles is the longest, right? So we're just, what we're going to do is instead of doing it this way, we're just going to put <clears throat> a circle. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have this area right here and we're just going to spread it out. And we're just going to go 25 miles. So this is, this is 25 miles from Pittsburgh. There it is right there. I mean, not too far away here, folks. I mean, it's not, it's not that far away at all. That's 25 miles. That's what we're talking about. And this is 25 miles in relationship to the United States. Very, very, very small area. So that's why it's very important to understand when you're talking about space and you're talking about different things that we understand exactly what we're talking about from the standpoint of what we know, right? And we know the United States and we know what we're talking about here from that. So this is the Gaza Strip. That's it. This is the West Bank. So, and and this is Israel up the up 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 in this area right here. Then you have Lebanon here, which is borders it. And then you know, in, interestingly enough, you have you know Syria here. And Syria right now is not in a good. It's not in a good spot. It's not in a good situation. Um, leadership. Leadership, uh, the military, everything is, uh, they're not doing all that well. Uh, Jordan, you have Jordan here. And then, interestingly enough, you have Iraq right here. And then here, you have Saudi Arabia. So, inter you know, interestingly enough, it, Kuwait, so when Iraq took Kuwait, um, we were actually at Desert Storm, we were, or Desert Shield, we were actually in this area. Not in Jordan, we were not not the not the border of Jordan, but we were all along this area, basically, you know, holding holding Iraq at bay. So this is this is what we're talking about. We talk about the Gaza Strip. So what is it about the Gaza Strip? Interestingly enough, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Gaza Strip, a brief history, and this is a brief history. And let me tell you something. This is a lot of moving through things you know, relatively quickly. So, so uh, there's a lot more to be had here. I'm going to tell you exactly where you can find it. You can find it right here. This is the Britannica.com and you can look up Gaza Strip and see exactly the same information I'm about to give you. So basically what happened, remember I told you about Yugoslavia, when I told you about Yugoslavia and I said post-World War I, there's a lot of countries that had these different borders as a result of League of Nations, as a result of the... Um, <coughs> as a result of the treaties, Treaty of Versailles, all those different things. Well, one of, one, one of them was in World War I, British rule took over the Gaza Strip. So Gaza was part of Palestine and Gaza was put under British rule. So Gaza was part of this big country basically called Palestine post-World War I. Israel did not exist yet, folks. It was just Palestine. Post-World War II, the UN accepted a plan for Arab Jewish partition of Palestine with Gaza belonging to the Arabs. So in 1948, British rule ended and Egyptian forces took Gaza. It was, it was like an immediate type of, um, I mean, Gaza, if you remember back to the map, 
Gaza actually uh, bordered Egypt. So the Egyptians went in and basically took Gaza as part of, I uh, mean, it was immediate conflict. As soon as the British left, the Arabs basically attacked Israel. And that's what, that's what happened there. So um, the fighting reduced the area to 25 by 4 to 5 mile area, which I just showed you, uh, called the Gaza Strip. Now, the Gaza Strip boundaries were set in 1949 between Egypt and Israel. So that's that was that was a done deal, and uh, with the help of the UN, really. And then the refugee, the Egyptians faced a ton of refugee migrations, and that led to all kind of problems. You know, every, everything you can think of when all of a sudden, you know, a ton of people come in, come into that area, and they need things. They need food. They need fuel. They need you know jobs. All these different things that they have. So the strip was taken by Israel in 1956 as part of the Suez Crisis and then reverted back to Egypt in 1957. Now, 10 years later, Six-Day War happens, and again, Israel back in, in the, to, to take Gaza Strip and, and Gaza. They, they uh, did this for about a, a quarter century. They basically had Gaza, the Gaza Strip. Then 1994, Israel began transfer of the Gaza to what they call a Palestinian Authority. In 2003, uh, the Israeli pr Prime Minister Ariel Sharon announced a withdrawal of Israeli soldiers and settlers from Gaza as a, a measure to try to gain some peaceful coexistence, and that was completed in 2005. Fatah, who originally um, had, was part of the Palestinian Authority and ruled Gaza, lost parliamentary elections in 2006 to Hamas. So Hamas and Hamas was officially on our terrorist watch list, our terrorist list of groups, the U.S., along with others. So that presented a problem. Then 2007, Hamas took control of the Gaza Strip. Fatah, which was um, originally the parliamentary authority, you know, ruled the parliamentary authority, took control of the West Bank. So now, um, you know, the Palestinian Authority tried a unity government with Hamas, but that failed, and that's 2017. So going back, so 2007, Israel declared Gaza Strip under Hamas a hostile entity because they, Hamas took it at that point in time, and they had, they had sanctions, power cuts, all kind of you know border closings, all these things. Uh, 2008, Israel closed its borders with Gaza Strip after rocket attacks from Gaza Strip. 2008, Gaza Strip demolished barriers between Gaza and Egypt, Gaza Strip and Egypt, to get full food, fuel, and other items. And uh, Mubarak, who was the Egyptian president at that time, allowed that to happen, you know, seeing they needed humanitarian aid. Well, Mubarak had, uh, had kind of problems, remember the Arab Spring and all that? So, so he had all kind of problems with that. They, he finally, they, they finally removed him as president. And the new Egyptian president in 2011 opened the border, totally opened the border. In the meantime, Qatar... And let me, I'll show you where Qatar is in a second here, provided millions of dollars in humanitarian aid to Gaza Strip at the end, uh, at the end of 2018. And they've provided somewhere around like $400 million. So they, they've, they've provided a lot of money in humanitarian aid. Uh, dispute continues to this day, more and more, you know, over border assaults, you know, these, these different, I mean, it just, it's, it goes on and on and on. So this is a very, very, very brief history of, to, of what we're talking about here. And I think this is interesting to show the different countries, right? So you have Qatar here. Qatar, they call it, but I, 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 Qatar, I think, is the, is the proper pronunciation. Um, that might be me, just me. But So this is Qatar. This is Bahrain. Bahrain. Um, United Arab Emirates, UAE, is here. So, this, so, you know, why is Qatar doing that? Because... Uh, Qatar has kind of a, a, a brotherhood relationship with the Arabs in uh, the Gaza Strip. So, I mean, this is this is what's happening here. So, it's, and, and it's funny because people think, you know, where's Jerusalem? Well, here's Jerusalem right here. Jerusalem is right on that border, right in that border town between the West Bank and <clears throat> and Israel property, uh, Israel properly, right? So that's where that's where all this situation is happening here, and uh, it's funny because you say you know what's the West Bank? Well, the West Bank of, of this river, and and what is this river, right? So this river is the Jordan River. 
So why is this Jordan? You know, interestingly, because it borders Jordan, right? So th this is what this is what we're talking about when we talk about the Gaza Strip. Again, it's a very, very, very light history on exactly what's happened in this Gaza Strip. But you can see there's your border right here, you know, between Egypt and this is this is Rafah, and they they they. In the history, they refer to Rafah a, a lot because that's the, basically the border town between Gaza Strip and Egypt. So that is what we're talking about when we talk about the Gaza Strip. So interestingly enough, and I, and I think a lot of people, hopefully, after you see this, you'll be able to sit back and say, okay, now I know where the Gaza Strip is. Um, I know where that is. I know where, where the... Uh, uh, what they're talking about. I know where the West Bank is. I know where these different areas are. So that is what we're talking about when we talk about the worldview. I'm not trying to say Israel, you know, is, Israelis or Palestinians or anybody else better than one another. The culture is better. I, nothing, nothing like that. There's no provocation here. No, there's nothing uh, controversial. This is literally just facts to try to get people up to date on what the Gaza Strip is and why it's important. And you got to understand that of this area, right? And, and this is something that's, that's very interesting is, you know, you have uh, about 23 miles, because it's 25 miles, 23 miles of coastline. So, I mean, if there's active ports there, they can accept port aspects, you know, from different, from different countries. But I don't, if, I don't know if there are any active ports whatsoever in that, in that area. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about the Gaza Strip. Hopefully that helped you to, to understand a little bit better. Now, let's talk about tanks to Ukraine. So we're going we're gonna to switch gears here, and we're going to go all the way back up to Europe. Now, we're going to travel. So travel, we're going to travel through here, through Syria, up through Turkey, up through Bulgaria, and we're going to go all the way up here to, to Ukraine. So here's here's some areas, you know, Ukraine air base at, L at Lviv. We have Kiev here, uh, Kramatorsk, uh, <coughs> Shev Sh Shevchenkova, Shev Shevchenkova. Sorry about that. I'm just not. Uh, yeah, I'm not Russian or, or Ukrainian. Bakhmut, and a former Russian ammo uh, dump that was basically um, bombed by a drone. So this is this is what we're talking about when we talk about these areas. So we we can't see, I mean, I can't see any terrain aspects other than what is shown here. But let's talk about this just for a second. Right now, it is close to being February. Uh, we're talking about sub-freezing temperatures. And what's happening is, is that the uh, uh, we're going to get tanks. Now, where are they going to go into? Where are the tanks going to go into? When they're finally delivered, where are the Abram tanks going to go into? Well, I would assume that they're going to go into the Ukraine capital. They're going to go into Kiev. All right. This is where the front line is, folks. This is where the front line is. This is Kiev. So you're going to have to take the tanks here and you're going to have to take them and move them from here to here. So let's just let's just work with Google and we're going to we're going to show elevation profile here. So let's say they move them in a straight line. So we're just going to move them in a straight line here. Now we can see the different. We're going to move them right, right along to, to right to help out Bakhmut here. So we're just going to do that. Now let's take a look at this elevation right along this side here. Let me get rid of this so you can see this whole thing. So this is the elevation. So we're talking about relatively, you know, as as you move along, you see the arrow here that will move along as I'm moving here. Um, we're talking about you know 490 feet. We're talking about. I mean, this is this is you know. Um, it's not extensively mountainous terrain, but it's pretty hilly. I mean, 500, you know, 600 feet here, then it goes up. You have a lot of mountainous terrain here, you know, 643 feet. So all these areas just to get this close to Bakhmut, just that, you know, to try to do whatever you're going to do, try to get the Russians out and do whatever you need to do. Now, <clears throat> how many miles is this? So right there, this is 304 miles, you know, to be able to do that. So when we talk about the Abrams tanks, what are we talking about from the standpoint of, interestingly enough, um, what is the, the miles per gallon, right? <laughs> when, when we talk about the, the Abrams tanks, you know, so um, it's, it's, 
right now, interestingly enough, um, the Abrams tanks uh, has about 0.6 miles per gallon. So 30 plus gallons per hour when operating at a tactical ideal, 10 gallons basic idle. All right, so we're talking about 0.6 miles per gallon, a half a mile per gallon. So you have to take this, basically this uh, area here, when we talk about this, um, especially when we talk about uh, areas like, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the idea behind this, right? So uh, we're gonna take this and say, okay, 309, 304 miles times two. So you're gonna need 600 gallons 600 gallons of fuel to get them from the Ukraine capital and travel along these areas. And this is, you know, this is, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. 600 gallons to get from the Ukraine capital to this area right in here. That's just one tank. So let's do, let's do some quick, let's do some quick math here. So we'll, so we'll just, do some quick math. So we'll um, we'll just uh, let's let's go ahead and just do some here. So we're gonna just quick math and, and see how see how it all goes. So we're gonna do um, six hundred gallons, right? Times thirty one tanks. So we're talking eighteen thousand six hundred gallons to get from point A to point B. Now, how how does that work? Well, you have fuel trucks. Now, the tanks can go through a lot of, I mean, they're very good tanks. They can go through a lot of different elevation. They can go through a lot of different terrain. They can do through snow, through mud, through, I mean, they're just an amazing tank, right? And they can go, you know, full speed. They're going 60 miles an hour. I mean, these things are just unbelievable, right? Can the fuel trucks go at that speed and can they go on all terrain? Well, the answer to that would be no, they cannot. Also, Basically, the Abrams tanks have jets, have literal jet engines on, on you know, that, that drive them. Um, these jet engines have to take jet fuel. So, so now you're having to, to, to transport the fuel along with the tanks. Now, I don't know whether anybody has ever seen the movie Battle of the Bulge, but the main, the main way that we were able to beat the, Rus beat the Russians, beat the Germans, was... Uh, to be able to hit their fuel, their fuel depots. And, and once we hit the fuel, the fuel ability, then that stopped the tanks. The tanks were fantastic. Tanks, Panzer tanks were amazing tanks, but there's a problem there. So the, so we're, we're giving tanks to Ukraine. Good for us, right? But the bottom line is, is they're getting 0.6 miles per gallon. You're gonna have to have that fuel from somewhere brought in well, however you're going to bring it in, you're going to have to make sure that it gets to the tank at the same time that they need it to be able to refuel those tanks. So there's a lot of things, you know, we talk about different aspects. We have to understand how sometimes that we have a situation where, you know, is this really going to be a good long-term solution to, to what's going on. Don't know. I don't know that. I'm just trying to give you facts. I'm trying to you know make you understand the geography of it, the worldview aspect of it, and be able to, to bring you down here to basically the terrain, because I think this is important. So right here, we're talking about an elevation of almost 700 feet. So, I mean, it, it shows it right there. So at, at 255 miles, you have 625 feet. I mean, this is this is Google Earth Pro. I just love this thing. I mean, it's just amazing. So right at the end, then you have you have a you have a, a little bit of a plane, and then boom, you're right back you're right back on the elevation. So that <clears throat> I tell you this again to bring you into the worldview aspect, to make you understand that this is about not just the cultural aspects and the geography and everything else. It's about understanding how these types of things in a country can present some challenges. Now, I'm sure, you know, I am not part of the Department of Defense anymore. I'm sure that the Department of Defense is probably going through 
their logistical planning, trying to figure this thing out, how it's all going to work, how they're going to get the tanks in, how they're going to get the fuel in, how they're going to get the maintenance in, because it's a lot of maintenance. You got to put a lot of maintenance on these tanks. Very, very amazing capabilities in these tanks from what I've heard. I've never driven in one. I've seen them. You know, I've, I've seen the inside of one. I've just, but I've never driven in them. I don't know. You know, I've, I, I wasn't a tank commander. I don't know any of that. So, I, I mean, I, I play, you know, I, I plead ignorance on all that stuff. All I'm doing is grabbing up what the facts and the capabilities are from the, from different websites, from different areas. So I, uh, I'm going to leave you with that. So what we covered today was we covered the Gaza Strip, a little bit about the history of it, the, the location of it, because it's in the news, right? It's in the news. The Gaza Strip is in the news, folks. A lot of things happening there. You need to understand where it's located, what's going on, and what the background is on all this stuff. You know, don't just sit there and say, "Oh, I got strips." Um, it's beyond beyond us. I'm not going to worry about that. And maybe we don't have to at this point, but there is a situation that is going on that at least we need to be aware of it. At least let's be aware of it and and be able to intelligently discuss it from a point of knowledge, rather than just from a point of this is what I heard on the news, or this is what I heard from website. I mean, I'll give you stuff from Britannica.com. It's not, it's not something that's, that's wild. Now, you know, where did I, you know, where did I get this, you know, the, the, the tank situation and all these different things. And basically what I'm doing is, um, you know, it's, uh, globalsecurity.org. You know, that's from, I mean, the, the tank will need approximately 300 gallons every eight hours. 300 gallons every eight hours, depending on the mission, whatever else. So there's a lot of things that, that goes on there, right? I mean, it's, it's just, it's 300 gallons every eight hours. And, it, you know, if they go 60 miles an hour, you know, we're talking about five hours here. So it's 1,500 gallons. You know, if we're talking five hour, you know, at going exactly at 600 miles. So all these things you can figure out yourself. Globalsecurity.org. That's where, that's where I got this stuff. So, I mean, it's not, it's, you know, I'm going to put it right here globalsecurity.org. So, I mean, I didn't, I didn't just pull it out of a hat here. That's basically what, what's, what I got, where I got it. So we, we covered, we covered that. So we covered that different area. We covered uh, Ukraine. We covered the tanks, different aspects about that. You know, so this is what folks, anybody can do this. You know, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that smart a guy, really. And there are people out there saying, yeah, you're right. You're not that smart. And right. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not an intellectual. I don't sit there and follow all this stuff and try to figure out all the, I'm just looking at geography. I'm looking at the tank. I'm looking at what it's going to need in fuel. I'm looking at all these different areas and putting it all together because I was in intelligence. And we looked at this stuff when we were in intelligence. We looked at adversarial capabilities and then how they all stacked up and what exactly happened. So that's basically it. So folks, thank you so much. I think Worldview is, uh, I'm hoping that you're enjoying it, watching it as much as I'm enjoying doing it. It is, it I cannot tell you how much I really enjoy the research and making me smarter so that I can talk to you and make sure that you understand exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the worldview. So until next time, this is Chris Greco signing off for the worldview saying, please understand the world as it is. Because if you don't understand the world as it is, then we will not be able to understand what our place is in that world. Take care and stay healthy. <laughs>